Hello everybody, it's the Grupeteer, and I'm back again with another episode of Cartoons vs. Cancer. And today's guest is a pretty neat one. It's Peter Ramsey, the director of the movie Rise of the Guardians from DreamWorks. Of course, here in Cartoons vs. Cancer, it's all to help raise money for a good friend of mine, Madeline Carlson with Ewing Sarcoma Cancer. And uh, we're pretty happy to have Mr. Peter Ramsey today. Hey, Pete. Hey, everybody. How are you? Hey, Grupeteer. And uh, since he can't be in the studio today, as usual, he has a... Uh, we have trapped his soul and body and mind inside of this little this little Santa right here. So, yeah, he's he's stuck in there. He's doing fine, but he's still. Uh, and uh, so you know, Pete will still be answering your questions. You'll just be talking to Santa here. And uh, yeah, so he's the director of the movie Rise of the Guardians. He's the you know man behind you know his credits include Monsters vs Aliens, uh, Batman Forever, and when I was looking through his resume, surprisingly enough, Fight Club. Right? Yep, Fight Club. Are you, are you allowed to talk about Fight Club? Uh, you just broke. You already broke the first rule, man. So sorry. We gotta. We gotta <laughs> end it now. We gotta end the episode now. What was it like working with uh, working on all those live action stuff, but coming in uh, before going into animation? Oh, amazing! It was my. Uh, it was my my version of film school. Basically, mm -hmm. I I got in when I was pretty young, and uh, uh, luckily, you know, kind of almost stumbled into it. And got to work with a lot of my heroes, a lot of great directors. Mm -hmm. I learned so much from, and uh, it all, you know, was in service of the dream of one day directing something myself. So it can come true, kids. Yeah, and the uh, and one thing that I didn't really even know until I looked you up is that uh, it. And this is this is a directly quoting Wikipedia because I don't know exactly how to word this. <laughs> is uh -oh. that Peter Ramsey is. Quote, the first African-American to direct a big-budget CGI feature. I think that's how you put it. I guess that's how you put it. Um, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. It's, it's pretty much it, yeah. I, I mean, there, I mean, there are how, other like, black directors doing, you know, animated features. Like, there's a guy, uh, Bruce Smith, who's a super talented guy, directed, uh, directed at one. But it was uh, 2D, and it was, you know, a little while back. But uh, in kind of the modern era of the CG films, yeah, I think mm -hmm. I am the first, so far the only. I hope there's a lot more, but yeah. we'll see. Did you even did you even know that at the time? Was that like you, you know, know it, it wasn't something that struck me until like several months in, and somebody said, you know what? Somebody somebody brought it up, and I was like, man, I I guess that's true, and it, it kind of became a bigger thing. It be, kind of became a little bit of a talking point, you know, in some of the publicity. Mm -hmm. for the movie which was kind of you know felt a little weird but at the same time it's good to you know it's good knowledge to get out there you know i talked to a lot yeah. of kids talked to a lot of schools and it's just good for them to know that it can happen so yeah. i'm very proud of it that way do you uh you know are you happy with uh the recent a lot of diversity in animation you know people like uh jorge gutierrez or rebecca sugar uh really like broadening uh, the genre of people who do animation it's great. It's been, I think it's been kind of an explosion in in uh, consciousness and also uh, also the availability of the technology and the knowledge to people. You know, yeah. I mean, when I was well, when I was when I was your age, young man, it's like you know, I, I all this was a mystery to me. You know, I, mm. I there were there were a few dusty books at the library you could get and like say, wow, what's that? That's yeah. called a storyboard. What what is it? Alfred Hitchcock used to use them in 1959. Yeah. You know. <laughs> And it, it wasn't knowledge that was that available when I was coming up. And now with the internet and, you know, I mean, you can, you can have a whole film school based on best on uh, behind the scenes features on DVDs, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, yeah. it's incredible. So I think all that is great for uh, getting more different kinds of people in with different viewpoints. And it's, it's just, you know, that's the world, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's silly to think that what we're, what, what, what we're getting now is really the full picture of what's going on. There's so much more and it's a good thing. And it's, it's great that like now you don't need to, you know, be the Nickelodeon uh, thousands of cells. You can just go on the computer and, you know, make your own stuff. It's yeah, a, yeah, exactly. You know, I'm in, I'm involved with this. Uh, you should look these guys up. Uh, anybody who's interested in animation should look up this group called Nimble Collective. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're uh, uh, guys. There's a guy, Rex, uh, Rex Grignon, who was a big tech guy at DreamWorks Animation, kind of helped build that company in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. But he started this thing where uh, they have cloud-based uh, animation pipelines. And what that means is people who want to make a film but don't have access to studio technology, uh, now there's a way for them to 
hook up with a company like Nimble, and they're really good people, and kind of uh, through Nimble, hook up with other animation professionals, get mm -hmm. input on their on their work, and and actually use use a professional level animation pipeline to uh, to produce films. And what what they ultimately want to do is make this available to everyone at at a very low cost or even or even free like you know yeah. like some other network uh network based uh platforms that are around for other things so mm -hmm. it's it's a pretty exciting time if you're really interested in storytelling and animation there are ways to get it out there now that there just haven't been before hmm. that's and what was the name of the uh was it nimble collective you said nimble collective oh yeah, yeah. Get website nimblecollective.com you should really check them out NimbleCollective.com, right? Yeah, there. that's <laughs> He was quick to that one. Tell him I said hi. Yeah, and tell him, tell him Pete sent you. You get a, <laughs> a little right. discount. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, yeah. So you uh, worked on all those things, and then you came to DreamWorks. And uh, how did you get involved with DreamWorks? Um. One of the projects I worked on in live action was a movie called Tank Girl. Oh yeah, yeah. And Tank Girl with Lori Petty and the Kangaroos and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tank Girl, I storyboarded it uh, with uh, Rachel Talalay, who's now directing Doctor Who and Sherlock. Yeah. She's pretty cool. And uh, the guy who produced it was a guy named Aaron Warner, who several years after that went to DreamWorks to uh, work on the first Shrek. So mm -hmm. he actually gave me a call to see if I'd be interested in coming to work on Shrek. And at the time, I was still kind of knee deep in live acts and stuff. So I was like, eh. Animation, sh animation, you know. Yeah. Whatever. Well, of course, a few years after that, it be Shrek becomes this huge international thing. CG, you know, CG stuff is on the rise, and there've been movies like, you know, like The Incredibles, and yeah. so, you know, just amazing stuff coming yeah. up. So this had some staying power. And uh, Aaron called me again when they were doing the, I think it was the third Shrek, and asked, hey, you know, you should really come check this out. I think it would be great opportunity for you. They're looking for people with live action experience who have the level of, of uh, you know, visual skill that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, and so come check it out. And so I did. And uh, I got hooked. I caught the bug, you know, yeah. uh, learned uh, animation, uh, storytelling and, and story art, which is different from live action storyboarding. And, uh, you know, Aaron kind of championed me to, to uh, start directing things there. And I, Kind of worked my way up the ladder, and it all culminated in uh, five years later. I think is when I got the uh, the Guardians gig. Yeah, and so you're at so you're at DreamWorks, and uh, William Joyce uh, gets or DreamWorks or something. Somehow they get the rights to uh, uh, Guardians of Childhood. How do you get to be the director of that? This is the first movie you've ever directed. Uh, yeah, well, but prior prior to that, I had directed uh, in live action. I had directed Second Unit on several movies. Oh, yeah. And that's how that's how Aaron knew me. So he kind of mm -hmm. you know pegged me as okay. This guy's obviously you know he's got some you know some chops as far as directing. While I was at DreamWorks, one of the things I did prior to Guardians uh, was uh, I direct. I was the head of story, the head of the story department on the movie Monsters vs Aliens. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of the lead storyboard artist. And spinning off out of that, they asked me to direct to direct a. Uh, TV special that was based on Monsters vs. Aliens. So a little half hour thing. And it was like, you know, it was, uh, you spend like a year on those. You know, they're in animation terms, they're relatively quick, but it was a good training ground for using, uh, learning to use the machinery of the studio. Mm -hmm. And so once I had gone through that, I think they felt, okay, we think he's gone through it, he knows what it is, uh, we're happy with the result. Uh, and it just so happened that uh, there was another version of uh, Guardians up and running, but they were running into bad story trouble yeah. and, uh, well, trouble on a lot of fronts, I guess. And mm -hmm. then the studio, the studio wanted to make a change in the creative team. So they, they brought in a new production designer, a new writer, uh, uh, and uh, they wanted a new director. And I was that new director. They decided, hey, let's give this knucklehead a shot. So there it went. And then, uh, what are we looking at in the comments? Um, someone in the comments whose name I cannot pronounce says, it looks like you had a lot of earlier projects that were visual. Um, do you consider yourself a very artistic person? And what was it like transitioning from live action to animation? Ah. Well, uh, I, yeah, I mean, I guess I, I've spent, I've spent like a, a bit, uh, most of my life drawing, you know, from when I was, what's, what some of the earliest memories I have, I've, 
I've always drawn, and uh, I guess more to the point, I've always drawn to tell little stories. You know, when I was a when I was five years old, I'd grab my mom's old Better Homes and Garden magazine and yeah. I'd find the white spaces and get my little big pen and I'd start at the beginning and draw a little story with little stick figures and you know talking kind of emoji looking guys and mm -hmm. I'd tell these epic stories that would go through the whole magazine. Yeah, and I just I was just one of those people who didn't stop drawing. I, I think everybody has some level of drawing skill. It's just that you reach a certain point and you decide you're you're not good enough and you stop. Well, I was, you know, stubborn enough to keep going. So in that sense, I was able, I developed a visual sense. You know, I, I, I was a big comic book reader. For a while, I thought I was maybe going to be a comic book artist or an illustrator. So uh, I, was, uh, I was a fine art major at UCLA and dropped out of that after a couple of years. So uh, don't do that, kids. Yeah. Don't be a fool, stay in school. <laughs> um, so, so the visuals have always been a big, uh, 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 a huge part of it for me, but part of, one of the reasons I didn't continue at UCLA is that I felt like I needed a narrative component to go along with the images, mm -hmm. something that I couldn't find in just painting a single image. Uh, some, something about film w was it for me, so I gravitated toward that instead. Um, as far as the differences between Live action and animation, I guess the biggest differences are in how you do them. You know, I mean, a story is a story. It, it's, there's not much that changes there. You, one of the biggest revelations for me was realizing that even though in animation, sometimes you're dealing with talking cats or, or you know, whatever. Talking monkeys or, hummingbird fairies. Exactly, yeah. hummingbird fairies. All those characters, if they're going to be believable, uh, they still have to have motivations. That they still have to have uh, some kind of organic connection to mm. the story. And I just rapidly and I just rapidly realized, well, this is exactly the same as it is in live action. Only the level at which you get to participate in those parts of the story as a story artist in animation are actually deeper than what you get to do as a live action story artist, storyboard artist. Mm. In live action. It's more about, let me help the director show you how he's going to tell the story. It's not my job to add to the story necessarily. Yeah. And I think that's changing a little bit in, in uh, live action boarding now. Mm -hmm. But uh, in animation, it's much more about, well, what can you bring? You know, a lot of times you're interpreting pages or you're, sometimes there's not even pages and you're working from an outline mm -hmm. and you, you know, you become one of the writers on the scene. Mm. So in animation, it's a much different sort of level of involvement in, uh, in the that in that part of the storytelling. So it was a, it was a learning. It was a great. Uh, it was a big shift. It was a learning curve, but I I really enjoyed the level uh, of participation that you got in animation. That was like that was like a TED talk right there. That was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Am I talking too much? I'm like going off. No, 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 it's fine. Um, <laughs> when you say uh, you make a narrative compound, what do you mean by narrative compound? Compound. Or component oh, okay. is what is what it says on oh, that oh, sheet. Oh, 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 yeah, narrative component. Uh, what I meant was, uh, I would try to when I, I when I was in art school and I'd be banging my head against the wall trying to come up with uh, subjects to paint stuff that I felt, mm -hmm. you know, because you can sure you can do a portrait of someone, you can paint an apple, or you can paint a you know, or you can paint an abstract thing. Or I wasn't getting as much of a charge from doing that as I was when I try to draw, uh, when I had a story to tell in images. Yeah. So for me, it was much, it was both easier and more exciting to have, uh, to tell a story through pictures than it was to just make pictures. Mm. And, I, and I love, I mean, I, I still do love, like, you know, I, I don't paint too much anymore, but I still enjoy just the, you know, putting one color against another or, you know, the capturing a certain kind of uh, some just forms or light or, you know, that part of it, I, I still love. But the real charge of it for me is uh, images plus a story. Mm. That's that's been the thing that's always excited me the most. Mm. And so speaking of images with a story uh, with your movie, um, you know, Rise of the Guardians, there's so much uh, there's so many like scenes, especially with the Sandman, I guess. Uh, I'm thinking in particular right. when. Uh, they're having that battle, the first battle they have where, oh, spoilers, by the way, if you haven't seen the movie, 
you should probably go see it. Uh, would you recommend seeing it? Uh, I'd recommend seeing it eight or nine times. Yeah, right? it's, yeah, I'd say it's, uh, I'd say it's all right with a non-biased view. But anyway, spoiler: <laughs> uh, the Sandman dies to come back, but he's, you know, he gets taken over by Pitch at one point. Um, right. And there's just this, like, the swirling vortex of like sand and black sand and just all this stuff going on. Uh, scenes like that, do you just like watch it back now and you're like, how did we do that? That's so awesome. You know what? Some of I'll t I'll tell you two things. Uh, number one, I've hardly watched the movie since it came out. Really? Yeah. Hard, I can't. I don't think I've watched it all the way through since it came out. It's you got to understand when you work on these things day in day out for mm. like three years, you're you're kind of yeah. done. You kind of you pretty much know the you know. Yeah, from it's like it's and and then you then all you can see i mean at least me all you can see is oh that shot's too short oh that's too long oh yeah. we never got that scene right uh really? you just huh. i mean you just start picking it apart is okay there... that that said yeah i i was uh, not long ago i was at a uh, at uh, at a college in detroit the college of creative studies mm -hmm. a friend of mine uh, who's running a department over there asked me to come and give a talk and I went with uh, Gabe Bordos, who's the head of character animation on Guardians. And we brought a few scenes from the movie to show the students for our talk. Mm -hmm. And the night before, we were going over our presentation. And we were playing back some of the scenes you know, on the computer just to make sure we had the right ones. And as they're playing, we're, they were kind of looking at each other and going, when's the last time you watched this? Oh, I don't know, a couple of years ago? I don't yeah. know, what's it? And we're like, this is pretty good. <laughs> this is pretty amazing. Yeah. Some of the stuff, I mean, uh, the, the work our guys did on that movie, the, the animators, the lighters, the effects people, I, it's just spectacular. Yeah. And the scene you're talking about yeah. is, like, is one of those, like, yeah, it's, it's pretty jaw-dropping if I remember. I, I mean, seeing it on a big screen is, is uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. So, I'll, yeah, I'll always be proud of that. Yeah. You guys at home think I'm just saying this because he's right there, but no, it's a really, it's a really good movie. It's great. Uh, and one of my, or I guess one of the, you know, parts that draw a lot of people, uh, drew a lot of people to it, was uh, all the celebrity voices that were on it. What were, what was it like working with all those people? Fantastic. Uh, a, a little intimidating at first until you, you know, you get in a room with them, and uh, I have to say they're, the, they were the nicest people. Right. I mean that, it's uh, Hugh Jackman. Mm -hmm. And Hugh Jackman and Jude Law, those two guys, they're probably the nicest people in the world. Really? They were so nice that I was trying to figure out, is this all fake? Are they just pretending for like six months? Yeah. You know, because we'd, we'd have recording sessions with them like maybe once every two, three months, mm -hmm. spread out over a couple of years. And uh, they were so good and so nice and so into it and so on. And uh, Alec Baldwin's hilarious, absolutely hilarious. Mm. Uh, Chris Pine and Isla Fisher were, were both great. And really, like, you know, seriously digging into the characters and really trying their best to, to uh, bring them to life and, and deliver, deliver, uh, deliver good performances. You know, mm. they were as focused, they, I think they were as focused on these as they were on any live action performance. Yeah. And how did you... Uh... How did you, I don't know if you're the one that casted some parts, but how did you, like, uh, come up with the idea that Alec Baldwin would put on a Russian accent to play Santa Claus? You know, it was, it was funny. It, uh, the first, at first we were talking about Alec Baldwin for Pitch. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was the first. And I'm, I, I, I think, I'm 98% I'm sure, so I'm just going to take credit. I think, it, I think I said, hey, you know what, what if he was north instead what would that be like mm. and we started thinking and talking about it and everybody thought oh my god that would be an incredible idea if you know for alec to be it's 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 kind of it feels like it's casting against type mm. but he's so funny and he's so he's definitely he's just got a alec baldwin he's just got a twinkle in his eye yeah you know and a quick wit and it just seemed like a great fit for him and he was totally into doing the russian accent and he was completely into it, and, and uh, all the little, the little language kind of, uh, you know, mix-ups that he does. Ali, yeah. he, lo he loved those, and he did a lot of, uh, a lot of great improv stuff with his voice. So it was fantastic. Oh yeah, uh, were there? Yeah, because I know he's uh, pretty known for his improv stuff. Were there any parts of the movie that he just came up with on the spot, like any lines you remember? Uh, 
Uh, I, you know, not so much. The interesting thing was he was very interested in kind of respecting the written word. Mm -hmm. He really, I think, just as an actor, uh, he uh, a lot of stage actors really want to really feel like the the, uh, the writer wouldn't have put these particular words here if he didn't really mean something. Mm -hmm. And I and I want to get at that meaning and bring something to that rather than oh I can think of something better than some writer I'm yeah. just gonna you know, blah blah blah. So what he would do more is just in the way that he del the, you know, in the way that he delivered his lines the the individual performances and also the uh, he'd uh, just little sometimes I so, sometimes we just ask him to ad lib it was more business or more things so when he's like you know using funny voice or when he's when he's singing or things like that, that was more of what he would kind of bring to it. Yeah. Not so much, not so much making up actual lines, but mm -hmm. playing. That's what he brought to it. Yeah, playing with what was there. Yeah, because you know it's it's he's, you know it's nothing of a role if they don't you know have fun with it. I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So, is there anything we're looking at in the comments? No. Then I have a question of my own actually that I'm kind of okay. interested about. So, uh, you know, the movie, uh, it's really well known amongst, you know, the, the real big fans of the movie. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of uh, Jack Frost pictures exist up there. I'm, I'm sure <laughs> oh, yeah. you're aware of that. Um, oh, yeah. Many of which uh, include Jack, and uh, Jack has like a couple with uh, Elsa from the movie oh, Frozen. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about those, those pictures? <laughs> They're great. They're yeah. fantastic. I'm, I'm happy that... Uh, I'm happy that the character, you know, uh, sparked something with people enough that they, that they, uh, that they get into that and have fun with it. I mean, it's 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 the kind of the best uh, the best form of flattery you can. That and some of the artwork is gorgeous. Yeah, and a lot of these people should be pros. Some of that stuff is amazing. And then there's you know all the mashup videos on YouTube and mm -hmm. and. Uh, it's it's uh, it's yeah it's it's really it's gratifying that people want to spend that much time and uh, and you know bring so much creativity to yeah. it. It's really cool. And then now I now I gotta ask: Are you someone that would put the two together in a in a couple? Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I well I, uh, I I never really thought about it, but then yeah. I'm not an eleven year old girl, so. I guess I wouldn't think about it. <laughs> yeah, they're like a, they're not exactly the same type. Well, they're ice type, but you know, you know what I mean by that. Um, so the uh, so the, you know the original book it came from the uh, Guardians of Childhood. Did uh, did the author of that book, who William Joyce, is that his name? That's right. That's okay, right. good. Yeah. Uh, did William Joyce have a lot of uh, input on how the the story came out, or how the script came out, or how the movie looked? You know, uh, yes and no. Um, we the, we we tried to kind of to honor what he had uh, what he had created, and he was he was actually around. He wasn't he wasn't an actual writer or director on the movie, uh, but he was around, kind of consulting. So as you know, with uh, as we were working on costume designs, we'd run things past him and uh, story points. You know, we talk a lot about that, and he, he and I. He and I liked a lot of the same film references, mm -hmm. and I, I think uh, he felt like I was, I, I saw eye to eye with him on the tone and creative, creatively, and, and also thematically, what it meant, you know, yeah. what was behind it all, which was the big, that was the, uh, for me, that was like the biggest thing that, uh, that was kind of the, the, the thing I thought was coolest that he did was not only say, oh, these guys all actually exist, and and they know each other, but they all have a specific purpose that they fulfill. Mm. And I thought that was a great idea. Yeah, I, I, and I love the theme, and uh, I'm not going to get too much into anything, but I think it's really, a, you know, the theme of you don't need to be afraid of fear. There's always, like, there's, you know, there's always sort of, like, a hope is really, uh, really prevalent yeah. today. Uh, yeah. You know, it can help a lot of people. So, uh, so you watch, you know, people watch the movie, and uh, one thing they've noticed is it's not... It doesn't look like a normal DreamWorks movie in terms of like the character designs and stuff like that. It looks a lot more uh, Jan Brett sort of style, kind of like mm -hmm. Norwegian folk carvings, maybe. Would you say? Uh -huh. uh, Where'd you like? Did you see other DreamWorks movies and you're like, I want something to stand out, or did you just think that this is the only way to do the story? You know, we felt lo looking at looking at, at Bill's uh, artwork. 
uh, we were trying to sort of, we're trying to find a way to capture that storybook feel. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time, uh, we knew that, you know, the, the, the idea was kind of to make it sort of, uh, well, we wanted to feel a little bit like a, like a superhero yeah. action movie without tipping too far in that direction either. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to find this kind of halfway point and there's sort of what they, what, what we ended up with, I think was kind of a streamlined version of Bill's designs mm -hmm. to try to hold on as much of the charm of those and the storybook quality as possible, but also to give it a little more of a dynamic kind of, uh, I know, uh, our designer, uh, Patrick Hannenberger and our, uh, our character designers, I know they were influenced by anime. Yeah. Uh, they were looking at, uh, obviously, Bill stuff. You know, and, uh, you know, good good Disney and Pixar designs, those were an inspiration, but we wanted to try to get away from, like, a, a you know, we didn't want to imitate a Disney look. We wanted this to look and feel different than a Disney movie does, and I think it, I think it does. Mm -hmm. um, so there were a lot of places we were drawing from. But I think it, most of the, the big overriding thing was it, we really wanted it to feel like an epic action adventure movie for like 10 year olds. Hmm. Yeah. You know, honestly, I, I was I was always thinking, man, you know, if I I was trying to dream of a movie that if I'd seen it when I was like seven or eight or nine, yeah. that I would never forget it for the rest of my life. Yeah. And that I that I'd half remember it maybe. And it would be you know, there's this palace where the tooth fairy lives and santa claus you know all this amazing yeah. stuff that you would like when you were you know 10 years later you'd have this memory of it back in your head that's kind of the perspective i was looking at it from. Mm -hmm. and in the comments we got we got something so Woo, somebody comments, uh, ghost kid there? is asking what was the best part about making rise of the guardians oh my god uh there's it's hard it's hard to pick any one best part because you, you know, when you do these things, there's a, there's a, there's different steps that you go through, mm -hmm. and it's almost like you're you're visiting, uh, it's almost like you're visiting different different lands or different countries. Now we're mm -hmm. in the land of storyboards. Oh my God, this, is, you know, it's incredible when you're first like seeing stuff storyboarded for the first time and the ideas are just being born, mm -hmm. and then uh, when you see uh, seeing stuff uh, just coming to life in the art department where you're. So, you know, you're picking different. I think if I had to boil it down, at any at any, there's several parts where this happens, but it's seeing stuff actually like come to life, and you realize, mm -hmm. oh my god, that's it. Like mm -hmm. the first time we saw the animation test of Jack Frost, where it felt like Jack Frost, yeah. the way he moved and jumped, and that was an incredible moment. Yeah. Or the first the first time you see these the the model animation models actually lit. And they look like they're going to look in the movie. Yeah. Incredible. Or the first time you hear the, the voices coming out of their mouths of our cast. Just I, yeah, I was, uh, you know, uh, it came out in 2012. I was 12 at the time. And I saw it in oh, 3D. Uh, and I remember the uh, just the scene where they're in the sleigh and they're leaving uh, Santa's uh, workshop for the first time. And they're going in the loop-de-loops. And I was like, wow! This yeah. is the coolest Good. thing ever! <laughs> Good, it worked then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then, uh, what do we, oh, well, there's more, oh, yeah, so uh, with that uh, stuff about art just being said, what kind of art were you interested in as a lad? Oh, as a kid, um, you know, I was interested in, uh, I think I was interested in all kinds, I mean, a lot of, a lot of art, I didn't even realize I was interested in it at the time. Uh, but it made a huge impact on me. Uh, we had a set of encyclopedias at home. Mm -hmm. And I would just like kind of obsessively flip through these things and yeah. I'd see all kinds of uh, old master paintings just in the course of flipping through these. And I'd, you know, I'd stop and look at, a, you know, a Rembrandt or a Da Vinci or a, a Picasso and I didn't really get them, but they were making an impact on me. And yeah. I was, there was, you know, I was fascinated by them, even though I didn't understand them. And uh, after that, I got, uh, you know, I really got into comic books. So I was a big... Uh, comic book fan, Marvel and DC, mm. was really into those. And that kind of brought me, you know, as I you know, was trying to do my own, that brought me back around toward like, eventually discovering the old masters again and, and, yeah. and uh, you know, ac actual fine artists. So it was kind of this roundabout circular thing where something that I 
probably had the seeds planted when I was a little kid. It just it just took me through comics and movies and cartoons and then back into well, what motivated those guys? Who did they study? You know, who did who did Jack Kirby and Frank Frazetta and Neil Adams and Frank Miller and you know who are those guys? Oh, oh, they they oh they like this painting or they like that painting mm -hmm. and you start investigating those. So it's and, following breadcrumbs. Basically. And were there any, you know, because you're in animation now, were there any uh, TV shows or movies or anything that as a little kid specifically, you know, either stuck out to you or you just liked a lot? Oh, God, yeah. I mean, I, I watched tons of cartoons as a kid. Uh, what did I, I really loved? Uh, I, by the time I saw the Disney's, of course, I loved the, like, Pinocchio made a yeah. huge impact. Uh, I remember, uh, yeah, like Disney. All the Disney's, those were always super special events because back when I was a lad, you know, I couldn't stream them. I couldn't get, D you didn't get DVDs. Disney would, they didn't even want to release stuff on uh, BCR, uh, on uh, uh, videotape back then. Yeah. They wanted people to come out and see them in the movie theaters and they re they re released the movies like once a year. Yeah, so had, like, the it made them really going. special. You know, you hardly ever got to see them. So it was a big event when he finally did. Um, but as far as uh, TV cartoons, oh, there was stuff like uh, a lot of the Japanese cartoons I really loved, like Gigantor, yeah. Kent of the White Lion. Those had a, like a special, they were, those were always a little more melodramatic and a little more serious than like, you know, sure, you had like Flintstones and Scooby-Doo. Yeah. You know, you watch those. And those are like eating popcorn. But, you know, some of the, uh, some of the Japanese cartoons, they, they, they were a little meatier. You know, they had a little more melodrama to them, and that really spoke to me. Hmm. I haven't watched uh, Kimba in so long. I should do oh, that. Oh, God, I used to love that. It's been, well, like, it's, you know, it's still great now, just watching the, uh, it's a little, you know, there's a little bit of the stilted animation, but still, that's yeah. just great now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, someone in the comments is asking, are movies and cartoons less less special now, in your opinion, because they're so accessible? Like you were saying about how you can stream anything or all that. A, a big part of me says yes. I mean, I, I and you know maybe it's just maybe it's just me not able to get out of my own head or my own frame of reference. Mm -hmm. But I I just remember being a kid and stuff like uh, God when I was a really little kid. You know they the the uh, they would show the Wizard of Oz like once a year. Yeah. Or like Charlie Brown once a year. So if you were gonna watch it, if they were gonna show it. If you blinked, you were going to miss something, you know, or if, if you weren't there in front of the TV for the whole time it was running, you were out of luck because you weren't going to be able to see it for another year. So it was, uh, I, it forced you to pay more attention in a way that, you know, that now I, you know, I know my kids, it's like, I'll be, Oh, come on, let's watch this great, let's watch this fantastic movie. It's so cool. Uh, and I'll turn around and like, you know, they're on their phone kind of like, you know, yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute, you just missed the part where he... Yeah. And we could just go back, and I'm like, oh, but it's not the same. <laughs> and I think there's something... That's why it's so great to go see movies in a the theater, mm. you know, because you're, like, you're forced to pay attention, at least most people are. Don't talk on the phone, kids, when you're, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, and it, it just... it height, I think it heightens the experience. It, it, uh, it forces you in a way to, to be part of it in a, in a, in a different way. And I, I miss that even, I just, I just miss that, that aspect of, of media sometimes. Mm. Convenience is nice, but you know. Yeah. So the, uh, <coughs> oh, excuse Bless me. You. Um, so the last, uh, the last movie director that I had on my show was a while back, Jorge Gutierrez. Um, hey, and, Jorge. Huh? I said, yay, Jorge. Yeah. Oh. Do you know him? He's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's We're so good. nice. He's like, I don't think he could be mean if he tried. He's like awesome. <laughs> Him and uh, like sidetracked. Anyway, the, uh, yeah. So what I was gonna ask him something and I forgot to do it. So I'm gonna do it with uh, the next you know movie director I had, and it was gonna be uh, were you you know when your movie came out or when when it was in theaters, would mm -hmm. you just like walk around and be like, hey, go see uh, the Rise of the Guardians <laughs> in theaters? <laughs> <laughs> we just like walk up to somebody like Rise of the Guardians, go watch it. <laughs> I, like, I probably should have. <laughs> uh, yeah. Dang, that was it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Did you like? I mean, would like would someone be like? You know, maybe you'd see it in a newspaper. 
Or someone would be like, hey, want to go see Rise of the Guardians? You walk in and be like, yeah, you should go see it. It's really good. <laughs> you know, I don't think I was ever in a position for that to happen, oddly enough. Oddly enough. Would, no, you, I, I, it was, I mean, yeah, sure. He'd be like tempted to go, oh, I hear this one's pretty good. <laughs> do you do you ever, like, to someone unexpected or, you know, someone who doesn't know who you are, I guess, say, like, hey, or, like, recommend the movie at any time? Um, sure, yeah. Yeah, that's happened. Yeah, that's happened. Oh yeah, that was really good. Oh, I love that. Oh, yeah, the, that's the director's so cool. <laughs> that's that. Yeah, it is. It's weird, man. It's weird. Mm. It's very weird. But uh, yeah, there's also the other one where it's like, oh, I don't. I've never seen that one. Oh no, what's that? Yeah, is that the one about the owls. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Do people mess that up a lot because? Oh uh, my god. They came oh, out the same time ish. Yeah. Don't get me started. No, actually, the the legend, the legend of the guardians actually came out like a couple of years before us. Mm -hmm. So when, when they were, you know, floating titles, because for some reason they couldn't just get the title Guardians. That was the yeah. original title. The original, original title was just straight up Guardians. But there was a legal reason we couldn't use it. Mm -hmm. So they had, they were trying to pick from this list of all these other titles. And uh, the one that they settled on, which, you know, we didn't have anything, the team making the movie, we didn't really have anything to do with it, mm -hmm. was Rise of the Guardians. And, you know, it's like, right, there's all these stupid rise of titles. and yeah. blah, blah, blah. But after a while, you go, okay, well, judging from the other ones on the list, it looks like this was the best one they had. So, mm. But it was so close to that Legend of the Guardians, which was the Owl movie, that to this day, people are still like, and now there's Guardians of the Galaxy, which is another yeah. one. So it's, yeah. Well, it's, they're, you know, and, like, the thing with that is they're both movies – I guess made to look sort of realistic as well. They have a lot of things I wouldn't say right. in common, but they, you know, like in a uh, style, they look very similar. Yeah, they're kind of yeah. I didn't, just, you know, I didn't notice it until uh, I like saw someone mess it up the other day, and I was like, oh wow, yeah. <laughs> oh god, no, yeah, it was constant. And the, the really funny thing was at the time we were like, oh, nobody's uh, that was two years ago. Nobody's yeah. gonna remember that, but man, it stuck, man. Yeah, everybody, everyone. Is legend? Is that the one with the owls? Are you doing? Are you, is that the sequel to the one with the owls? Yeah. Well, maybe no, people no. saw Guardians of the Galaxy and they were like, oh, Santa's back or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ghost Kid, again, in the comments, is asking, did you put any secret things in Rise of the Guardians or little Easter eggs, I guess? No, not actual Easter oh. eggs because there are those in the movie, but, you know, uh, <laughs> like secrets or anything in the movie that might uh, people might not have uh, noticed or something. I guess that might be ruining the surprise, but I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm trying to think if there's any, like, super secret little little things that we tucked in there. Mm -hmm. Is this going to be a Grupa Studios exclusive right here? Yeah, no, it might be, if I can think of anything. There, but, you know, I, I don't, to tell, you the, to tell you the truth, I don't think so, because we were making the thing so fast. Mm -hmm. we, we really didn't have a whole lot of time to go, hey, you know, it would be cute if we did this whole other thing. Spend yeah. five or six hours doing that, will you? Because I think it's a good... We, we were really kind of charging to, you know, it was like all hands on deck and it was really, uh, it was really uh, a push to, uh, to, to get it through. But I would say there, I think there's a lot of cool details in the animation that if you've only see it, seen it once or twice, I think there's a lot of cool things. I was, I, actually, I was just thinking the other day for some weird reason of the Yetis and a lot of the little yeah. things they do in the movie. Yeah. There's a lot of little fun moments that we said, oh, you know, let's let, let's make it so that the Yetis really take their job super seriously. Yeah. So like when they're coming up to Santa Claus and they like give him a book and they come away and they do a little, you know, gesture and just little performance things like that, I think, uh, probably were the closest things we had to little mm. Easter egg moments. Just So if you just watch the side characters sometimes, there's real little kind of fun, cute things that they that they do. And speaking of speaking of side characters, you're in there with your uh, you got a line in there, right? You say like <laughs> you say like hey, hey right? Speaking, some, something stupid like that. You say like I think it's uh when uh when Jack's bringing the guys across the street on his sled, I think right. someone says hey, and it's it's you, it's you. <laughs> hey, <laughs> what's going on, you? Yes. Yeah. Something something weird, something stupid. Uh, in the comments. Brooklyn Christina is asking, do you have a favorite character in your movie? Whether it be a guardian or not, just in general. Uh, you know, uh, I can't say that I have one 
favorite. I, 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 I guess I'm really partial to, uh, to, to Jack and North, mm -hmm. you know, those two, I, I really, I'm, I'm really pretty, uh, really pretty attached to, I love both of those guys, but see, I love all of them. You know, I love yeah. Sa Sandy. I think, I, I think all of them have moments where they're my favorite character. Yeah. I put it like that, you know, it's hard, it's hard to pick one. It's like trying to pick which, which is your favorite kid, you know, it's almost impossible. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Uh, the, I guess if anyone was wondering, mine's the Sandman because uh, oh, I love the I love the way that popular. you did it all silent. I love that. Yeah, that's just the way you did it. So I was I was saving this till we're twenty minutes till the end of the interview, I guess. But I wanted to save this until sort of the end because it's something that I hear a lot of people ask all the time. I don't know mm -hmm. if you know what it is, but and I don't know if you have the control over what if this is going to happen or not. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people want. <laughs> A sequel to your movie uh, would such a thing ever exist uh, uh, based on how it performed at the box office I guess or would you even be interested in making a second one and, well would I be I'd I'd love to because I really love those characters uh, mm -hmm. and I actually feel you know for rise of the Guardians it was my first movie and I, I, I constantly go oh if only, if only I could go back with what I know after making it and make it Again, I think it would be so much better. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, it, it, yeah, I'd, I'd love to to, uh, to really give those characters another shot because I, 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 I think they're great characters. I think the story has something great to say. Uh, as far as it actually happening, it's, I, 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 I'll put it, uh, hmm. uh -oh. yeah, I, I, I uh -oh. honestly don't know what to say. I mean, particularly because, you know, DreamWorks has been, it's been sold recently, yeah. so that throws everything in doubt. But I do know, you know, our box office performance for a number re of reasons wasn't what they wanted it to be. It wasn't what well, wasn't the greatest, you know. It was, mm. but when it came out on DVD, it like broke a bunch of records and stuff. So yeah. it was. It's this weird thing of like, I, I think when it came out, people literally did not know that the movie was out. You know, a lot of people just didn't know it was there. But by the time it had come out on video, uh, it became, uh, a, you know, it, it really became a top seller. It was, it was def definitely in the, you know, one of the top selling DVDs that year. Mm. So I think they realized kind of late that there was a real audience for it and for those characters. But I think there, uh, you know, the, the, few, the, few, the, the few movies that came out after us as well, didn't do very well. Yeah. So I think they started realizing they had a real problem with the way they marketed and and got their movies out. You know, mm -hmm. there was a real problem with uh, with uh, there's a real problem, and and it kind of uh, I think our movie was the first one, uh, one of the first ones. It, it it really became apparent with. Unfortunately, it's, it's mm -hmm. really it's super sad. And um, with, yeah, and so, with this uh, kind of you know. Uh, I guess loose track of a box office ins and outs with uh, DreamWorks, as you you know kind of just said, and probably everybody know that watching knows. Uh, DreamWorks was a, uh, recently bought by Universal. Uh, how do you feel about this? And you still work at do you still work at DreamWorks? I, I don't. I actually haven't been there for uh, a year, a little over it two years, year and a half, oh, yeah. year and a half, two years. It's been since I worked there. Oh, huh. so many stuff. Like your IMDb page, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, how do you feel about it? Um, I, mixed feelings. Mixed feelings. Mm -hmm. I, I, it was, a, it was a wonderful place to work. Uh, the talent that they have there, you know, the uh, the artists, uh, the directors, mm -hmm. brilliant, brilliant, brilliant people. I mean, there's no reason that there's no reason that with the right uh, creative uh, kind of management, that place should be. You know, cranking out movies that are that are every bit as good as Pixar, or Disney, or and make everybody as much as much money. Mm. You know, so there's I think there are things that are beyond the control of the artists that have always kind of held it back. Uh, that said, it it really was a wonderful place to work. I already I always had a I felt like I got a, actually got quite a bit of support from Jeffrey Katzenberg. Mm -hmm. He he really did create a good environment in a lot of ways. You know, there were, there were some things, you know, it's a, it's a, he's a larger than life character. Yeah. 
so to speak. And uh, uh, so there were, you know, there's there, there's the good and the bad in every working situation. Mm. Um, them being sold, my fear is that uh, my fear is that they will take take the things that made it or that made it potentially a great place to work, which is the the culture there, the way that they took care of the artists, mm -hmm. um, the sense of security and value that they had for artists, because you were treated pretty well as an artist, which is rare in this world. Yeah. Cool. And I'm afraid that uh, a new, uh, you know, a, a new company with a new way of, of doing things, everybody wants to make everything a lot cheaper now. I'm really afraid that some of that will fall by the wayside. Hmm. So I don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see, you know, I mean, the movies might get cheaper. Uh, will they get better? I don't know. It, de it depends on the artistic vision at the top. That's what it's all about. That, so the, 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 the thing that makes me hopeful is that there is a change at the top and there maybe someone will come in who really does have uh, a great creative vision who's going who's gonna to allow the artists working there to really do their best. And that would be, that would be great. Maybe, maybe it'll be me. Just maybe. maybe it'll, it'll be you, man. Go, go for it. Send it, in your resume. It could be, it could be you guys watching this too. Follow <laughs> Follow your dreams. There you go. Uh, and in the comments, we have something from uh, Tony Cartoon is asking, "What kind of story would you like to tell if you had, uh, if you either just made another movie or you had total power over everything in a movie?" Uh, what kind of story? What? That's 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 always a tough one. Uh, there's, I would be. I mean, the things I like in stories are are kind of. They don't have to be very specific. It's 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 kind of vague, you know. It can, yeah. I just want to I, I just want to tell something that has a uh, a lot of heart that has real emotion in it uh, that has interesting interesting intellectual ideas. Like you know, our movie had this thing of you know how do you fight fear? Yeah. You know yeah. what is the what is the what is the difference between uh, fear and you know all the other things that the guardians have what is the what would be the point of having characters like this in the world so those kinds of those kinds of ideas to me are like strong things to build a, a story on and then uh, a, just a great emotional component and characters that are real I'm not a real like you know uh, I didn't come out of TV cartoons mm -hmm. I came out of feature long-form narrative storytelling and that that's built on slightly different things than you know uh, than, uh, uh, you know, gags and, and yeah. short humorous bits and all those, yeah. of course, for animation, you've got to have that stuff and it's great, you know, mm -hmm. there's, there's, but the things I'm more interested in are the, the things that you can dig into in a long form story. I mean, if I could just, if I could tell something that had the heart of like, uh, you know, uh, 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 Ratatouille, mm -hmm. How to Train Your Dragon, uh, you know, The Incredibles, yeah. uh, Toy Story, you know, all those, I, I think all those things. <coughs> Bless you. Thank I think you. all those things are uh, all those are incredible, incredible just stories. Period. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what does uh, we kind of just answered that, I guess. Uh, sorry. Um, in the comments, there was a in the comments. Brooke and Christina is asking, who are going to be the big heroes in the animation industry of the future? Which I think uh, they won't mind if I retweet to saying. Who, you know, do you watch any TV shows or see any movies on which you see real potential in the people that are making them? Yes. Um, there's a friend of mine, a guy named Shannon Tyndall. There's a movie coming out called Kubo and the Two mm -hmm. Strings from Laika. Yeah, uh, yeah. Shannon was the creator of, of, that, uh, of that story and, and movie. Mm -hmm. And it's going to, I think it's, it looks like it's going to be really brilliant. Uh, and I know Shannon is working on some new stuff. So if you see his name any place, that's a, really a guy to watch. Um, uh, Tom McGrath, who's done a bunch of stuff at DreamWorks. Oh, yeah, I know. He's got a, he did Megamind, and, and he was a director on the Madagascar movies. He's got a new movie coming out called Boss Baby. That's going to be amazing. I think it's going to blow people away. Oh, yeah. That's a dream, new DreamWorks movie. Um, I really like... Uh, oh, there's a... Actually, I, there's... A, there's a new animated Spider-Man movie from Sony. Oh, yeah, I'm actually doing, yeah, I'm actually doing a little bit of work on that myself. Oh. And a, a good 
a, fr- a scoop exclusive. Yeah, exclusive. Get the get the banner. Get the banner. <laughs> Call CNN. Yeah. Uh, uh, and a, a good friend of mine, a guy named Bob Preschetti, uh, who uh, it's he's making his directorial debut on it, and Bob's really brilliant, and I, the movie's going to be incredible. Hmm. I think it's going to have a really unique take on the look and the on the character and a, and a lot of things that I, I think are going to make it really special. Um, who else? Uh, I think there's uh, yeah, there's like I, I was there's so many super talented people out there and and young people coming up. Uh, uh, there's yeah, there's amazing amazing stuff out there. There is a lot of talented cartoon creators out there. All of which you can catch on Cartoons vs. Cancer on Grumman Studios. Hey! And uh, just to sort of wrap things up, because I'm afraid we're getting to that time, uh, the question I usually like to end all interviews with um, is if there's someone out there watching this and they're like, wow, the Grumpeteer is so cool. Also, Peter Ramsey is such an awesome <laughs> director. And they, want, they, you know, they really want to get into animation. Uh, what would you say in this, I guess, changing age of computer animation, CGI, and all that stuff, what would you say is the most important thing for a wannabe animator to have? Mm. Um, I mean, obviously, you have to be the best at whatever you want to do, the best that you can possibly be. So there's no other way around it than to work work hard. Work hard and don't stop. You know, like I, w- I was saying earlier, there's all this information out there. That you that's available to you. There's so many tutorials and so many, so many uh, you know animatics and storyboards and scripts and anything you can want to study is at your fingertips. I would have killed to have had that when I was, you know, just starting out or just just dreaming about this stuff. So take advantage of all of that. Uh, I would also say the thing that really uh, separates um, the thing that's really valuable is people who understand and know how to tell stories because mm-hmm. that's you know if you know that it's going to make you even if you're not a writer it's going to make you a better storyboard artist it's going to make you a better animator it's going to make you a better uh, any any craft in animation that you're interested in it the better your understanding of story is and how you can tell stories visually and what you know what it means to uh what it means to work with themes what it means to uh, work with character Mm-hmm. Any of that stuff, the better you understand it, the more effective and more sought after you're going to be. So I would say study as much about story as you can. Mm-hmm. You know, there's plenty of great books on uh, story structure, whether it's for fiction writing or screenwriting or, you know, dig into that stuff. You know, there's a lot of, you know, the little Pixar 22 rules of making a great story. Yeah. You know, that's great. You know, tattoo those on your chest, but don't stop there. You know, they're they're great, you know, they're great things to keep in mind, but it goes deeper than that even. Mm-hmm. And the best of all is to write your own stuff and make your own stuff. And I, I would, I, it's, but I, that's the number one thing I would say. That's what separates, you know, good from great is your understanding of story. Hmm. Well, I like that the answer wasn't keep drawing for once. So that was, a <laughs> <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, Peter Ramsey, in case you didn't watch this entire thing, is the director of Rise of the Guardians for DreamWorks. You can go get it on DVD now. It's on Amazon or whatever. Um, I think it's on Netflix, too. Ooh, Netflix. it's on Netflix, it's too. Man. Bring the whole family around. Get them off their go. phones. Um, Rise of the Guardians and chill. Yeah. No, not, not, that, not that one. <laughs> it's a, let's not do that. Um, thank you so much for you say like Guardians and chill on my show. Hey, man. Come on. <laughs> That's great. Um, <laughs> uh, if you, uh, you want to watch more Cartoons vs. Cancer, there's a link in the description below for the entire playlist. The next episode is July 8th with Joe Murray, the creator of Rocco's Modern Life in Camp Laszlo. And then yeah. the next next episode is on July 18th with Chris Savino, the creator of Loud House. So I got my work cut out for me. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, we will see you guys then. Please donate in the description below to Madeline because that's where the show exists. And uh, unless you have any parting words, Pete? Madeline? Best of luck. Definitely. Hope everything goes great for you. Everything will. Don't worry. And we will see you guys later. Bye.